In a world of terrible music, 10 songs dared to stand above the rest. 10 songs that would bring hope to a generation. 10 songs that will blow your freaking mind. Uh, yeah, so it's my top 10 songs of 2018. Let me explain. Hey everybody, I'm Clifford Summy, the pop song professor, and welcome to my channel where we make English class awesome by explaining and sometimes listicalizing the best songs in the world on school days. And let's jump into a couple of honorable mentions. Actually, like seven of them because I'm indecisive, whatever. Conversations with my wife by John Bellion, where he sings the lines, will you love me when my phone turns off? I don't wanna be some digital Jesus. John Bellion, always makes catchy, interesting, deep, introspective, reflective, relatable stuff. He's got all of the buzzwords, and it's a really good song. Lucky You by Eminem and Joyner Lucas because they smoosh mumble rap. But nothing is feeling like anyone has any effing ability to even stick to a subject It's killing me. The inability to pen humility. Hatata batata. Why don't we make a bunch of effing songs about nothing and mumble them? <laughs> Balm to my soul. All the Stars by Kendrick Lamar and SZA. I mostly like it for how it sounds. It's just a gorgeous, beautiful song. J. Cole's 1985 seemed to be a call out sort of diss, sort of like here's some advice from an older, much better rapper to Lil Pimp or whatever. I was about to say Lil Gucci Gang. Don't worry folks, Lil Gucci Gang showing up on another list. But 1985 had some really good advice. It was a really good song. I personally like NF's song Why because I don't think that we have enough songs questioning ourselves and questioning wealth and questioning the status quo. And I liked how he asked questions. I've got a deconstruction video coming out about that very soon. Kanye West's I Thought About Killing You doesn't sound like much, but if you listen to the words, it's really interesting and it doesn't just feel pretentious. It sounds like he's actually saying, yeah, I thought about killing you and I hate you, but I also thought about killing myself and I like myself way more than I liked you. It's a pretty deep dive. And then the 1975 song, Give Yourself a Try, which was, was pretty cool. It had some intergenerational angst, but it also had some good advice for young millennials. And let's jump into my list. But first, who wants to think about this? And by this, I mean the criterion that I use to judge these songs. I'm looking for songs that are good. They fulfill the purpose they were intended for. They are true. They conform to reality. They are beautiful. They give us a moment of epiphany or a sense of wonder at something that is cooler than we could have thought of before. I'm looking for songs that are catchy, that go deep, have larger cultural relevance, and that I just plain like. Cause gosh darn it, it's my list. Oh, also one more. I, they have to be one Wonderful too. Yeah, I did write that down. So, number 10 is a tie actually, uh, and this is because it's my freaking list and I didn't want to put these elsewhere, but I wanted them to be on the freaking list. So it's a tie between Taylor Swift's Delicate and 21 Pilots Morph. Dude, Taylor Swift is freaking awesome. She's an incredible songwriter and Delicate was a fun song. And Morph was incredible. It, it sounded so good, but it was just so personal that I didn't feel like I could actually put it on the serious part of the list. Sing it with me if you know. They'll always try to stop me, that Nicholas Borbaki, he's got no friends close, but those who know him most know he goes by Nico. He told me I'm a copy. He, he would mock me and it's almost stopped me. You get the idea. But it also had some legitimately poignant lyrics about death and trying to avoid it. It was just a really good song all around. Number nine is Stupid Deep by John Bellion. And it breaks my usual preference in music because it's a little bit slower and even more thoughtful. Uh, but it's got some really good lines here, like in the chorus. What if who I hoped to be was always me and the love I fought to feel was always free? What if all the things I've done were just attempts at earning love because the hole inside my heart is stupid deep? That chorus touched me. It was it was beautiful. And then you hear in the verse, what if where I've tried to go was always here and the path I've tried to cut was always clear? Why has life become a plan to put some money in my hand when the love I really need is stupid cheap? Not a lot of lyrics to it, but it's just simply beautiful. Number eight was Demi Lovato's Sober, and I can't believe that I put a Demi Lovato song up on this top 10 list, and I'm honestly really sad that her going back to rehab was the reason that caused this song, but it was the first time that I ever felt like I had any sort of personal connection or anything to do with Demi Lovato. She basically talks about slipping up, not being sober, or, or using drugs, or something like that, and asks for forgiveness from those closest to her. Number seven is Still Feel by Half Alive. This song, so catchy, so good. The music video was so cool and clever. The choreograph was awesome. And it's a cool song about 
hope and about still feeling alive. And it, I think it has a lot to do with the band's name, Half Alive. Even when things don't feel great, you're gonna get that kick and you're gonna go back into it. I can feel a kick down in my soul and it's pulling me back to earth to let me know I am not a slave, can't be contained, so pick me from the dark and pull me from the grave. Mmm, I love it. Number six is the 1975's Love It If We Made It. And this song talks a lot about the social issues going on in our world right now, how problematic they are. And then it has this chorus that keeps saying over and over again, and I'd love it if we made it. Yes, I'd love it if we made it. After each verse declaring, modernity has failed us. We're into this, this new age of post-modernity, and there are quite a few references to these sort of philosophical ages on the part of the 1975 in their music. And so it was really cool for them to kind of draw that practical, concrete connection between these big ideas of modernity and postmodernity to what we're actually experiencing. They have references to drugs, to racism, to suicide, to Donald Trump even. Number five is Hunger by Florence and the Machine. This song, so powerful, and it's not just the lyrics. Florence does such an amazing job of using her voice to communicate emotion and longing in the song. We hear in the first verse, at 17 I started to starve myself. I thought that love was a kind of emptiness, and at least I understood then the hunger I felt and I didn't have to call it loneliness, she goes into the chorus where she sings over and over again, we all have a hunger. That thought, that sad thought of love being a kind of emptiness, of a wanting or a desiring for something, rather than a contentment which seems so much better, that's just beautiful and sad and Powerful. At number four, we have J. Cole's song, ATM, or as he said, Addicted to Money. And the song is basically about the rap game and how a lot of rappers rap about money. And so he kind of spoofs them a little bit and his chorus is, count it up, count it up, count it up, count it up. But then if you pay attention to the verses and you watch the music video, he's showing that it's not worth pursuing money at all costs. We hear a particularly poignant statement in the third verse, proceed with caution. I heard if you chase it, only results in a hole in your heart. F it, I take the whole cake and I won't leave a portion. It's only an organ. Thank God mama couldn't afford the abortion. And so it's this ironic situation where not having enough money for somebody actually led to a good thing for J. Cole, and he's talking about how sometimes money is not always a good thing. And he's saying that sometimes money is the problem. At number three, we have 21 Pilots' song, Neon Gravestones. And where I like Morph better, personally, I understand that Neon Gravestones is the more culturally significant song, and it has some of the more poignant, stripped back, simple, just punch you in the face meaning kind of lyrics. In the song, Tyler Joseph talks about how we glorify suicide, and so we give this message to young people that people will notice them and think about them and care about them if they do something dramatic like killing themselves. And at the end of the song, he tries to point his young audience at people like grandparents, people over the age of 60 who have been dedicated to life. Really powerful song, especially that imagery of the neon gravestones, the symbol of death that's in this bright light but it's an empty, bright light. Or as Tyler Joseph might say, it's a cold fire. At number two is Florence and the Machine's song, Big God. And I think that this song deserves to be at number two for a number of reasons, particularly because not only does she create this big sentiment that a lot of people can connect with, but she does it through this personal example from her own life where this dude ghosted her and wasn't texting her back and it like wrecked her. And so a friend was like, man, if, if that's gonna screw with you, you're gonna need a big God to satisfy you. You need a big God big enough to hold your love. You need a big God big enough to fill you up. She's basically recognizing, wow, I'm a lot emptier than I thought I was. Combine that message with the awesome, powerful vocals that we've come to expect from Florence, and boom, you have a number two song. All right, it's time to reveal the best song of 2018. But if you are a songwriter and you've been enjoying these videos and you are curious about knowing more about how to write lyrics like some of these incredible lyricists, rappers, artists, everybody, you should check out my magical songwriting process in the description. From studying all of these artists, I've put together a method that will help you to put together a good song every time you try to write one. Totally free, down in the description. And the number one song of 2018 is This Is America by Childish Gambino. I mean, did you really have to ask? There can be no 
other. Now, seriously guys, despite the song having the fewest lyrics of any song on this list, combining the message of the lyrics with the message of the music video, looking at those two in comparison, it's just been an incredibly impactful song for the internet and for the United States. Donald Glover, aka Childish Gambino, who I remember from Community, what an amazing show, six seasons and a movie, uses multiple mediums to tell a story of a country that somewhere along the way has gone wrong due to racism. It's a powerful artistic project and it has to be the most impactful song of the year. And it's not just about racism, it's also a little bit of a self-aware satire of the way that hip-hop America acts. So he references Gucci, he talks about hunted bands referring to money, he mentions drugs, he mentions the police, he says get your money black man. There's a lot going on in the music video and in the song there are layers and just so much depth to the meaning. There are plenty of other videos out there that you can go watch that, including my own, which is here on this channel. And yeah, thanks for watching everybody. Remember that if you are a songwriter and you wanna get better at writing original lyrics that sound good, check out the magical songwriting process down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you guys next time. Oh yeah, also watch these videos, they're cool.